and welcome everybody it is john the net guy and we are live for tech on tuesday number six this is a very special edition of tech on tuesday in that we have a giveaway from a brand sponsor so the trifo maxwell is the star of our show today it is a security enabled smart vacuum so this thing i'm really really excited to show you guys it's got a built-in camera a built-in wireless camera and it can clean floors and it can do a whole bunch of other cool stuff it is from the trifo company so i want to thank these guys for sponsoring this video as well as the other two vacuums that they sent me their other their lucy vacuum and their emma vacuum which have even more capabilities but today when you see in the lower left corner your left <laughs> the vacuum giveaway details here they're going to be coming soon they're going to be coming towards the end of the show but they will be before the end of the show and you can learn how you can win this robot vacuum i've given robot vacuums away before so you know definitely good for my word here and this is the one you're going to get we're going to clean it up in really really good condition and send it to you that said chat is how we work it here i already see one person in the chat say hi to dave frank thank you let me know if my audio sounds good i've made some adjustments here from what we saw last week and i want to do that there might be a little delay but i'll clue you in on why in just a sec about that one uh, but there are five different products today we've got a couple of really cool webcams to show come some neat lighting kits from the wise company and the star of the show the trifo vacuum but before i get too far i've got to invite the amazon folks in now there's some rules i can't tell you to subscribe to follow me on twitter to do any of that kind of social media stuff and i have to direct you only to my amazon page which is fine because that's where i recommend that you buy most of this stuff for their their easy shipping their easy return policy in case you have any issues so i'm gonna kick off amazon here you're gonna see me a couple times act like the show started over you know and it's going to be kind of annoying but i wanted to let you know about that up front so we're taking a look here at the chat if you do have any questions about these products let me know and i will make sure that i try to do my best to answer them so first product up let's let the amazon people in and we'll get started is going to be this 4k webcam Hey, welcome Amazon shoppers. It's John the Net Guy. It's Tech on Tuesday, number six, and we have a special giveaway today. This is the Trifo Maxwell robot vacuum. As you can see down there, <laughs> the details will be coming soon. We're going to be giving this vacuum away. I'm super excited for the show today. We've got a lot of really, really neat products, and I want to show you the first product here. And this is something, hey, Serene, thank you so much for showing up. I'm going to call out every single Amazon follow that we get, but by the way, tonight. And if you do follow me on Amazon, you're going to get notified each and every time I go live. I've got giveaways. I've got lots of cool stuff going on. The very first product I want to tell you about is one that Nexago just sent me. And I've been using it for a few days now. And I have to tell you, this webcam is amazing. And when I say amazing... I'll tell you why you're actually looking at it right now <laughs> the audio delay is probably going to annoy some of the people but i'm going to fix that later um, but this is the image quality that you can see you can see ai powered 4k conferencing camera just to prove it to you i'm going to hit this button and i'm going to go back to my dslr so this is my dslr it's got a little bit faster frame rate the colors are kind of purple even though in my studio they're blue i couldn't get that fixed but this is literally the next to go camera. If I bring it back to you, you can see it before and after. So that's the webcam. And this is nearly a $2,000 DSLR. Now, yeah, the DSLR is probably that much better, but is it 10 times better? And that thing I can't leave on continuously. This thing you can leave on continuously. It's got a lot of really cool features. So if you're just joining on Amazon, we're taking a look at the Nexigo. This is the N970P. Probably one of the nicest picture quality and most feature filled webcams I've ever seen. If you're a professional streamer or you're somebody that does online training for other people, or if you're just expected to have a professional appearance, you can't beat the picture quality. This is the picture quality that's actually coming out of the next ago. The colors are more accurate. It feels like it doesn't have as much pin cushion distortion. It's much more square, more, uh, you know, 
uh, correct in aspect ratio. That's something we worry about in photography. We do lens corrections and stuff. It feels like the lens is much better and it's got some pretty amazing features. One of them being a super wide field of view. Check this out with the remote. I can adjust the zoom level. So you don't usually see all the stuff that I have in the studio. I've got a monitor down here with your chats. I've got uh, a couple other things going on there. I've got my key light up here and you know, by just hitting a button, I can change the zoom range on this thing. So it's got a full remote control. Let me show you what that remote control looks like here on the side cam. So those are all of the preset locations. I can change the zoom manually. I can, you know, locate myself. I can add new presets and I can even, if I come back here, I can adjust all of the color and contrast settings without having to go into any software. So you plug this in and it's a plug and play camera for your laptop, for your Mac, it works everything. So, hey Jim, welcome. I just see you join the show and repair your PC. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, also have another follow from Amazon customer. We're just taking a look quickly now at the Nexigo N970P. This is probably my favorite webcam. And I'm just showing you some of the features here in the menu system. So the way I'm able to get such an amazing picture out of it is I just went through some of these settings and tuned them up. I got my color temperature set right. I got a few of these things. Got to call out a couple people that I see have shown up here. I just want to make sure. I got a uh, friend of mine, Zachary Solis, shows up and says, hola. Glad you could make it. Got a couple other people showing up there as well. Give you guys a shout out shortly. So if you didn't notice, I'm actually using a webcam for the show right now. The audio might be a tick delayed than, more than usual, but this is the 4K Nexico webcam compared to my $2,000 DSLR. Now, the DSLR is slightly more sharp, a couple other little things, but the picture that you're getting out of this is amazing. And let me show you where this thing sits um, right now. I'm going to just pull this camera over for you guys. don't normally show live the other side of my studio here, but that's the camera right there and that's the one we're using so when i switch over to it that's the picture that you're seeing from it and this is already losing a little detail because it's partially zoomed in so i can actually zoom look at that all the way out and when you're sitting in front of the camera you can see the detail that it has colors supremely accurate on this thing and then the preset locations is another selling point so once i get my frame right i can hit a single button and I can, I can jump in. So that's the wide angle that I had. There's the correct matching frame for my other one. But let's say maybe I wanted to show a product over here. I can literally hit a button and I can frame my window just like that. Maybe I wanted it to be on the other side. I could do that. And these are all just presets. I can zoom really, really close. Or maybe I want to show you what show you're watching. <laughs> so the Tech on Tuesday with the Net Guy. Really super cool features out of this webcam. We have to remember this is a $199 webcam from the Nexigo company. Um, I hate to say the, the Brio killer, the Logitech Brio 4K has been the mainstay of most professional streamers and executives. But this thing is really, really close. I could see a lot of use cases. If my main camera died and I was in a pinch, I could pull this thing out. And I started the show on this and nobody really even noticed. So just coming back over here, I'm going to show you a little bit about it. Why is this thing got such a great picture quality? It's the Sony sensor in it. So it's got a 1, 2.8, 1 over 2.8 inch Sony low illumination 8.5 megapixel sensor. So it's 4K resolution but it's 30 frames a second. So it's not going to do 60 as some of the other cameras do when you switch over the resolutions. Um, very, very good showing here with remote control. A couple things that they could improve upon doesn't come with batteries. It's a simple nitpicky thing, but you're going to need a couple AAA batteries to throw in the remote when you do that. The things that I do like about it, it has got a nine foot cord. <laughs> you guys see me all the time on these webcams pulling the cords out. I've got one here. Heck. This is the one coming up on the show here. And you can see this thing's not even six feet. I got a six foot wingspan. I could pull that out. This other one's got an extra three feet on it. So that's what you'd normally expect out of a webcam is something around the five and six foot range. This thing's got a full three meter capability. Other cool things uh, on this one, it does have a follow mode. So you can go into the menus and you can go to the setup and you can do auto framing. So I can 
do some different things like this and you'll see that it's actually going to follow me <laughs> as I move around. It's going to going to follow me in the position and I can tell it where to go. So that works pretty good. If again, you're a solo streamer at home, maybe you've got a cooking show and you just want people to be able to see what you're cooking. Again, this might get a little dizzy, here, <laughs> but it's got a little bit of a delay, but then it's following me with that electronic pan tilt zoom capability that it has. So again, Nexago N970P, how do we find the products, John, <laughs> such as this Nexago? Well, let me pull that up. It is my Amazon show page. So if you visit the net guy here, you go to amazon.com slash shop slash the net guy. This is my show page. I'm just going to refresh so you can see that when I'm live, you'll actually see the picture of the show down here in the corner. And then you're going to see all the products that are on the show carousel. We're taking a look at the N970P right now. You'll see some other review videos. If you maybe missed a prior show, I put all those products up there. And if you come down to Tech on Tuesday, <laughs> I opened it up earlier, so it's open. But if you come down to here, they're all numbered. And if you come to number six, this has all the products we're going to look at today. Now, I, in all honesty, earn a very, very small commission off of these things. So if you purchase it from Amazon, it doesn't cost you any more. And it gives me a tiny commission back on this. And it's been working out really well this year. I want to thank you guys that have purchased through these links. So this is just some of the marketing material on it. It's $199.99, so just under $200. I haven't seen it on sale recently, but even at that price, at full price, it's probably worth it. Um, you know, I have to say there's a lot of webcams out there. One that I'm going to show you here in just a second that don't add up to their specs. This is one that absolutely does. Now, I didn't have the chance to do the microphone testing that I want to do, so if you want to see the full review video before you decide, that's going to be coming out soon, and I'll have some samples of the audio. But with the dual mics, it's actually really good. So that is the first product, was the Nexago N970P. I'm going to go off to another product here, and welcome all you guys from Amazon. Just so you know, this is John the Net Guy. I'm going to be giving away this vacuum cleaner here. This is a security enabled smart vacuum. It literally has a camera in the front of it and you can watch what's going on in your house and it does motion detection and it can actually tell you if somebody is in your house when you're not around, which is pretty cool. One of the first vacuums I've seen to do that. So if you're on Amazon and you got any questions, feel free to reach out. If you do follow me on Amazon, I will give you a shout out here. Uh, even put your city and state if you want, and I'll tell everybody where you're from. And the next product we're going to go up to, just want to get that set up here for you, is another webcam. Now, this one I paid full retail for. The, the next ago they sent this to me for a fair and honest review. The next one, I saw an ad for it, and I thought it's going to have to be good. With all the specs that it had and the luck that I've had with some of the uh, other Avermedias. This is the Avermedia. This is the live streamer Cam 513. That's a lot of letters, I know. <laughs> it's the live streamer Cam 513. Now, it is a 4K webcam. Its resolution here is listed as USB 3.0 4K. It says it has the same, essentially, Sony sensor and, uh, you know, a field of view. The difference is this Sony sensor is much better that I've seen than this one. And I'll show you why. And I can go back and forth between them luckily today. So this is the one we're going to be looking at. I'm going to put it down here for you guys so you can see the one that's currently up. So see my framing here. So yes, that is the Aver Media that we're looking at right now. So that's the live streamer cam 513. The way I'm going to demo this to you is I'm actually, I have it plugged into my show laptop here. And I'm going to open the Aver Media Cam Engine software. And that's the software that comes with it. I've had it down here just below me. And I'm going to use it like you would maybe a normal webcam. This is about my laptop height. It's got some cool stuff, actually. <laughs> There's already an effect going. I'm going to have to turn that off or I'm going to, I'm going to giggle myself out of here. This is pretty crazy. Um, so I'm going to switch over to it. And you're going to see right away the sensor quality differences here. I'm just going to get it lined up. There are a couple cool things about it. I'll tell you right away, the stand on it is adjustable. So that's a neat, cool thing. Let me know if the audio is still working here in the, in the seated position, there's move some things around, but, um, so this again is the Avermedia that we're taking a look at and I'm going to bring it up here 
and that's what I look at. Now, there's going to be a little audio delay, just the way the microphones work and the video encoding at different speeds. Hey, Michael from Houston, Texas. Thank you for joining. Uh, we're just taking a look at the Avermedia uh, Cam 513. This is the net guy. We're doing a show today that, by the way, we are giving away this at the end of the show. So please stick around. If you're watching on Amazon or the other services, this thing's going to be awesome. I'm going to show you all about it. I got some cool video. Um, and I'll even explain what this is <laughs> and how it, it worked with the uh, robot vacuum. So <laughs> right now we're taking a look at the software on this. And now you'll notice the colors right away compared to the Nexigo. And I can go back to the Nexigo here. So even the Nexigo, you know, me moved over to the side. I can, I can even change my framing on the Nexigo if I turn that follow mode back off. I had the auto framing turned on, so it followed me over here to the corner. I'm going to change that real quick. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go back to one. So again, this is the color and quality and clarity of the Nexigo, not the Avermedia. I'm going to switch back to the Avermedia and you're going to see immediately the difference. So this one, you know, the colors are not quite there. Hey, uh, welcome, Skull. I just saw you join in here. And Novella Hub, thank you so much for joining. Um, we're taking a look at this. Now, I can fix a few of these things, right? Like, I can adjust the white balance with their software until I think I've got maybe a more natural skin tone. But you see it's kind of turning purple on me. It's not doing a great job capturing skin tone. I can tell it to go to auto. It's a little bit more, but this orange is, is way off. Um, so you can see that's already off a little bit. I can adjust my brightness down and up and the sharpness until I get a good picture. So there you go. So that's a, a decent showing out of a 4K webcam. But, you know, I kind of, I hate to say it, I expected a little bit more after seeing the great results that we got out of the Nexigo. So this one will work. It does have some features that are, I would say are more consumer related. Hey, Amazon customer. Thanks for uh, waving down there in the Amazon chat. Um, you know, it does have some more consumer related features. If you have Zoom on your PC, for example, it's saying I'm using a lot of RAM. Well, this computer is doing a lot of stuff here. And this software really does let you test some of those features. I can enable some things like smoothing. So just like Zoom, it'll smooth out my skin, try to make me look a little nicer, which I always appreciate. Um, you can adjust the skin tone. If you think your skin tone is off, you can change this. And honestly, I haven't seen a big difference. You guys can let me know if I guess I'm looking a little bit more pale there and... My sign changes color and a little bit different there. So I don't see a lot uh, before and after with this one. Hey, Roland Reed, uh, welcome to the show. I better not uh, say who he is because I think I have a lot of family on the show now. Uh, <laughs> it's going to get embarrassed. So the one thing that I will say that the Avermedia has from a software perspective, and again, the picture is decent. It's just not as sharp or as feature packed. Um, is the ability to do effects so you can do effects you can do some follow modes you can do some of that other stuff but you know if you don't have a beard like the net guy and you want a beard it will try to follow you now it has a little bit of trouble with my beard over beard that's always good and there's actually a really funny story and i don't know if it was this one but uh there was a lawyer who was on a webcam for zoom court and his kid had been playing with something like this and sure enough he showed up as a cat like i i you have to search the video for it but it's really really cool so yeah as it detects my face it does good so if you had a budget uh of what this one comes in at and i can pull that up for you real quick here so this one's at 159 right now and like i said i paid full tilt for this thing but if this is what your budget allows is just that um, and you want the capability of a privacy shutter that's what i didn't show you yet on this is it has a fully metal integrated privacy shutter this one could be good and the closer you get it to you the closer that it is mounted the better it's going to look that's the one thing i would say about it so you can see that's my dslr there and you know it's getting close other than putting a cat on my face but it, it kind of still has a green tint to it. If you want to take the time to really play with the hues here where I can, you know, maybe change that again, this is a little bit delayed even in there. You could probably get a pretty good showing out of this one. The other thing, like I said, if you move it closer, it usually will get a better picture. So you can see I'm already looking a lot cleaner now 
with that close-up picture, I'm just impressed if you're doing a conference camera, that other one works really well. Now I'm going to take the mounting plate that I have off of this one, and I'm just going to put it on the back of my laptop. And so I can show you something cool about the mounting that this has. So just real quick over to here. So there is the Sony sensor in the front. There's that integrated privacy shutter I was telling you about. It works really, really well. Dual microphones as well from Aver Media and a USB-C cable to a USB-A. So it's going to work with your older USB-A slots. Both of these are that way. Um, but a couple things that I really do like, especially on this one, it has tilt. That's a really, really nice thing to have. So it's a little bit cheaper than Nexigo. It's a lot lighter and a lot smaller if you're a traveler. And then you can see here as I plug it into my laptop, you know, and I'll come back to the laptop view here. You know, it, it is a decent picture, not again at the level, but you can read all of the things that are up here, the signs, the products that are coming up. And this is the Aver Media. So let's go take a look real quick at some of the specs. 4K Ultra HD, it's going to have its zoom uh, capability, it's going to have the Type-C connector, and the base on this one, like I said, probably one of the better bases, all of them. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm going to have to pull that one up here in the chat. Okay, they're, they're talking to us in the chat here. Uh, Skull says, has tilt for the weirdos whose monitors aren't level. I am a super monitor-like pet peeve if they're not level. So like my iMac over here, I would put like a tiny little uh, matchstick under the base if it's not within like a millimeter. And I, I, I'm crazy like that. So absolutely, I'm with you. <laughs> or Josh says, or you just live on a hill. <laughs> There's that too. So I like it. Hey, Nouvelle Hub, thank you so much for the follow on Amazon. Awesome. I like that. Um, it is the first step in winning the robot vacuum that you see over here over my right shoulder. And so you've done a good job there already. So not to spend too much time on this. Uh, I do want to show you again the Amazon product page. If you're ever trying to find uh, the products that I've shown on here, if you literally just go to amazon.com slash shop slash the net guy, this is going to be my page. It's going to have the live stream that I've got going on right now. And then you can come down here. It'll have all my tech on Tuesdays. And this one is that camera right there. We're going to skip off to the next product here. How good is it at filming beer? Have you tried that out yet? I have not tried that out. That's from our friend Hops and Brews. Uh, another John who does a great beer review channel. And this is the next product I'm going to show you guys. It's probably one of, again, the smallest product that we're going to have on the show today. It is not a webcam. But it will work with your Wise IP camera and does pretty amazing things. So I'm going to grab that. This is how small this thing is. Tiny, tiny little product. Let me show you on the side cam here. Wise Spotlight Camera Kit. Now, when they developed the V3 Wise camera, they broke the mold on this thing. They literally uh, made a camera that is upgradable. So this is an upgrade. So you have to have a WiseCam V3 to use this thing. They made a, an entire product line around this from the Wise socket that I've shown you before to the Wise floodlight, which uses it as well. There's a lot of really cool things. This little spotlight kit, and we're going to change the studio lighting up here a lot to use it, <laughs> um, is really, really cool. It is, like I said, an add-on. It's about $16. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up on the Amazon carousel here. Hey, uh, Const Constantio Morelli. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I butchered your name there, but thank you so much for the follow. And Amazon customer, thank you for the follow. It's a first step in winning that robot vacuum. So if you're lucky enough to have one of these WiseCam V3s that has a great picture, awesome star vision, night vision sensor, I've shown that, then you want to get a little bit crazy little fancy with it you can put this spotlight on it now normally this thing doesn't really even put out any light you might see a, a small blue light on it you might see some irs on it but you're not going to deter any thieves with it now this changes that story it's kind of cool really 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 super easy to install let me get some of these things out of my way here um it's going to come with basically two components you're going to have this cable with this y adapter on the end 
And then one side is going to say, and it's very easily labeled. So this one says connect to the spotlight. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this spotlight. Now it has some adhesive on there. Don't take that adhesive off yet. And I'm just going to plug it in just like so until it reaches that line on the back there. Then on your camera that you've got right here, all you're going to do is plug in this side says connect to camera. So we're going to plug this side to the camera. Now what this does is it uses the same power cord and it essentially piggybacks for power. So by doing that, I'm going to grab the power cord for this one. It's going to have the ability through that little micro USB connector to turn the spotlight on and off and you can scare away an intruder now. So as somebody's coming up, you can have it automatically turn on the spotlight, which is really bright actually. So if you've got a side yard maybe, and you want to have both a camera there and a deterrent factor, you can do that. Now, another cool thing about the V3 camera is it has a pretty loud siren. Now you can see the light turned on automatically. Now it's not <laughs> taped down there, but I'll go over to the camera there. So you can see it's just starting up. It's got the light and that's how it sits on top there. We're going to go into the app and we're going to finish this process inside the app. So I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to bring up my phone. Will the light strip support home kit or thread? I'm not sure exactly on the home kit. If you're talking about the Apple stuff, it does work with all of the Amazon stuff. And I believe the Google on the Y strip, but we're going to be talking about that here shortly. So give me one second to get that. So yes, we're looking at the Y spotlight. If you're just joining, this is John, the net guy, by the way, down in the lower right corner, you're going to see some information, including information about our giveaway coming up for this vacuum. So I don't want you guys to miss out. That's the star of our show. We're coming through a few other products, but I'm going to show you all of the cool stuff about that vacuum here shortly. So I'm loading the wise app on my phone. And then I'm going to show you guys here. And a side by side, I'm going to take off some of that information so you can see it here. So some other products that I've talked to you guys about already, my wash machine sensor, my leak sensors that we have there, my water heater, kitchen sensor, my switches, a little camera socket that I made there. You can see all the other one, lampy McLamp face. This is a wise home here. If you've ever seen one, <laughs> my cigar box, my studio temperature sensor, you can see it's 69 there inside of that. I've got cameras. And right here, I have the studio camera. So this is the one that we have. Now, if this is your first time plugging in the Wise Spotlight on top of that, now I'm going to bring it over here so you can see it. So if this is your first time here plugging the Wise Spotlight, it's going to ask you to set a couple settings. And those settings are going to be under here. And we go under accessories. You see that? And then you have the spotlight installed. So you set up the camera first. And then you add on the spotlight. So it's pretty slick here. Now I can go through the spotlight and I can change any of the brightness. So there's the picture and I can say low brightness. Now you guys can kind of see what that is, or I can say high brightness and that's getting a lot brighter. You can see my face is lighting up. It's kind of scary looking actually. Um, but where's this going to be helpful in? Let me show you real quick on that. Alexa, turn off the studio. We're going to shut down all the studio lights in here and we are just going to have the computers and whatnot. That is the lighting that you're saying. You can see my entire studio with just that light. So you don't have to have a light on constantly in the room and the starlight night vision sensor is so good on this thing to begin with. This is actually kind of blinding. <laughs> it really is enough to light me up for the big camera. And you can see that that illumination with, with essentially no other, artificial illumination in the room is enough to light it up and I can change that to the lower level if I don't need that much brightness. And again, that, that night vision sensors in there, I can turn it off completely. Now what's crazy about this is that's how dark it is. And that's how amazing that starlight night vision sensor is <laughs> Isn't that crazy. There's literally like my DSLR, you can see, can barely see me on this. You can see me clearly on the, the camera. Now, of course I can set the controls back to auto and it'll sense if it's dark and then I can bring it to low or high brightness. That's going to blind me again. <laughs> so that is the Y spotlight. Now, if you're just looking at it and you say, okay, I want to turn that on and off. There's a quick control right above. Let's see. Can I do it here? Like right there on the app. <laughs> so if I hit that little tiny control there, 
you can turn that on and off. And what they've done is they've actually made it work both with the floodlight and the spotlight kit this way. So you can turn the light on and off as needed. Super, super cool add-on. Now, $16.97 at Amazon right now. Uh, it's a little bit of a spendy add-on, but again, if you came around a dark corner and you saw that pointed at you, <laughs> <laughs> trying to show you the light without showing you how messy my desk is. Um, or you can also say, Hey, you know, get away from my car. Give me my catalytic converter back. That's the alarm that it has. Turn that siren off. So I don't bother you guys. <laughs> Alexa, turn on the studio. So she's going to turn our lights back on. I'm going to make some adjustments and we'll get back into showing off our cool products. But that is the wise spotlight. Now, again, some of my studio, Alexa, turn on the studio. There we go. <laughs> We're back. Alexa, set the head key to 50%. I, I can't set it to any higher. Or I start to shine off of you guys. Novella hub. Oh, I gotta, I gotta put that up on the screen here. He's got a great idea on this. <laughs> a beer alarm for hops and brews. A absolutely. You know, you've got motion detection capability in this camera here. It's a, got an incredible picture. It's got an incredible ecosystem with it as well. So I, I would not say that that would be a bad idea <laughs> as well. Okie dokie. So that was a fun product and it's a cool little add on. Let's go take a quick look at Amazon. Just want to double check. And Rachel says it's clear. And uh, from Amazon, Rachel, thank you for watching. And this is again, the Amazon, not Amazon, sorry, the wise spotlight kit. This is an add on. If you've got already the wise cam. And again, you can take a look at it through this camera. <laughs> That's the kit right there, the Wise Cam Spotlight. You need a V3 Wise Cam, and it will work wonders for you. Um, just so you know, if you're just joining us, this is John the Net Guy. We're doing a giveaway here for the Trifo Maxwell Security Enabled Robot Vacuum. But we're going through a few other products first. I just wanted to show you a few things. We've got one more product ahead of the vacuum, and then we'll get that out there. Uh, details about the sign up are going to be showing up below here shortly and we'll go from there so i'm going to quickly go back over here to amazon because i want to show you where you can get this now uh, a lot of people have complained honestly about the shipping from wise um, this one i don't know if it ships directly from the manufacturer or not this is 1679 it says 1679 i want to get that exactly right due to Amazon rules. And it's got a really good user rating, as you can see up here, 4.5 out of five. Now I did, I was kind of jokingly saying this, but there is a story of a guy using his V3 wise cam here to actually dissuade some uh, catalytic converter thefts. They, he got the motion detection alert. He had it on a cellular Wi-Fi modem in back wherever he's at. And he was able to kick off the siren. They look up and they take off. It's awesome. So if you want to get this, this is available again on my Amazon shop. It literally is amazon.com slash shop slash the net guy. Can't do it wrong. You're going to get notified here. If you follow me every time I go live, you're going to see past product reviews that I've done, which are pretty cool. If you've missed a show and you're going to see tech on Tuesday, number six, that's where you can find it. The next product up is going to be the wise light strips. And yes, I'm going to have to turn off my lights again and do this to really get the full effect of them. Uh, this is a product that I may be sending off here to a friend, but I, um, he's going to have to fight my kids for it because I use RGB lighting strips all of the time in my studio. I've got them back here and I've had them forever under my desk, but I realized in testing these the other day that this one only shows blue, which thank goodness that's the only color I need, right? Um, it has a, a little problem right now and that was from a different company. So you know, this we're looking at is going to be the wise light strips. If you have any questions, feel free to shout them out in the chat. <laughs> I can't say those, some of those things I'm seeing in the chat on the air, by the way, uh, this is again, the wise, uh, strips. There are two versions of this, but unfortunately due to Amazon regulations, I am not able to show you things on Amazon live that are not for sale. 
So this one happens to be for sale on Amazon. It does not look like it has prime shipping. So it's going to take a little bit longer to get. Luckily, the person that I've talked to about sending this to will be able to get this one early because I have it. Um, Wise did send me this out for a fair and honest review. So I have to acknowledge that. Uh, but they have no say in the comments that I'm about to give and or what I think about this product. Now, spoiler alert, I think it's really cool. I was playing with these last night and you're going to see how easy they are to set up right here. This is the little control unit. So it's going to walk you through every single thing that you need to do to set up your brand new um, LED strip. Now I've had a lot of different LED strip brands and I've set them up and I've even shown some on the show and most all of them have a, you know, setup process, which is okay. Being a wise product, they've gone through the full wise uh, you know, ecosystem here, and you can use these in rules. So if you have some rules that say, Hey, when that person sets off my motion light and that turns on my spotlight camera, set the police siren colors, you know, set the red and, and blues going and see if we can scare them away. You know, you can do something like that. So that's a control unit. It does have, and I have not peeled it off yet. It does have a sticky back. They show this a lot, putting it on like the back of a, a headboard or something. And you do have backup access. So if you don't want to use your home automation assistance, maybe you don't have one and you just want to cycle through the colors or modes, there's two buttons on it and you can do that. So that's the control unit. The next one is the power brick and power bricks vary in quality and performance. This one is 12 volts. So it is the full 12 volts, but it's 1.5 amps. So for those that do math, that's 18 Watts. So there's 18 Watts of power here, and that's going to be pretty bright. You're going to see how bright these things are here shortly. So this is another set of clips that they give you to make it super duper easy to install and mount. I do have to warn you though, the thing that it told me right away when, it, when I was setting it up is it says, okay, go ahead and mount the control box and then mount all these one time sticking clips to everything you want. I'm like, I don't know if I want it there, right? <laughs> Maybe that's not where I'm going to want it. Uh, you know, get, do yourself a favor. Don't permanently mount it until you've had a chance to really use it. So I'm going to set this off to the side so I can package it back up later. This is the real. Now your first instinct is to plug this into this, that into that, plug it in and let this thing light up. It's not good for them in here. And it's not also good because it generates heat uh, for you because this can start a fire. It can be a problem. So I always recommend take these things completely out. Now, the one that I got here under my desk, I think it was about $20, $25 from a well-known company and it's six and a half feet. It barely fit the desk and turned the corner. This one, <laughs> six feet, six feet, and almost all the way more. It is got the literally, this is 16 feet of light strip here. So there also can be extended and connected to each other. I don't know the full limit. I know that they sell a 32 foot version of this. I'm wondering if that one has a stronger power supply though with it so there i've plugged them in and now i'm going to plug in the power to them and then i'm going to plug them in here now because mine have been initialized one time they're not going to turn on instantly unless i have it set to whatever the last mode was and here you can see they're already showing the cool colors that they have but normally they're going to start up blue and then once you go through the app setup process, it's going to turn green and then it's going to have a bunch of other color options for you. So if you're just joining now on Amazon, this is John, the net guy. We're taking a look at the uh, wise strip led strips. So this is the wise strip, not to be confused with the wise light strip pros, which I have over there, which I'll be doing in a future show. Hopefully when wise starts selling them now, we're already getting some psychedelic colors here. Let me go show you how you control that in the app. Now you can control it in the app or you can actually control it verbally through your home automation system. Now it's funny as I think it's on sound reactive mode you can see every time i make some noise it literally moves that's a one of the many many modes that it has i think that's where i left it on last night was uh the music mode here so i'm going to pull this up side by side so you can see me and these really cool lights i don't know if i should wear them or something this is something i think that hops and brews would do it's probably going to throw my audio off and nobody will be able to hear this but yeah if you want a new necklace for party this is a cool option but no these are my studio strips here and no, we're not going to upgrade the firmware. 
Um, one thing I really liked about these, and I'm just going to set them to a base color. Let's set them to my favorite color, blue. Okay, so now they are blue. Now what's interesting is my camera doesn't capture blue naturally, or what I would say is natural, but take a look at what a GoPro shows these as. So super bright blue color, almost overloading that one. Let's take a look at the other GoPro. Yeah, it's, it's a very, very bright blue. And I'm going to switch real quick all the lights off again so you guys can see this. Alexa, turn off the studio. Okay, then we got our one small overhead we're going to turn off. And there you go. So that's the, the color that you're going to see on these things. It's rich, it's vibrant, it's also accurate. One thing I want to show you is if you slide left and right in the app, and I'm going to take the details away. If you slide left and right on the bottom here, you can actually adjust the color temperature of these. And these also do have the cool new follow the sun support for the wise. <laughs> Novella hub light up Betty White's chair. That's a really good guess as to who I think I'm going to send these to because this would look really good in a studio. Again, this is just the white color on daylight and you can see me, you know, you can see how just that much and um, no flickering. You notice that <laughs> I got flickering all the time from my uh, black magic ATEM, but no, these things are solid and that is at 64%. I can lower them down to 1% brightness. Again, look how, how soft light that is. It's not doing the PWM pulse that you normally see, which is bad for photography. If I turn it all the way up back to 100% brightness again, and I stretch these out, this would definitely light a large area. I've seen people use these indoors, outdoors. <laughs> Somebody said, my uh, home automation assistant said something wrong. It can't turn off my studio. Well, yes, that's because it's turning off my studio. So this is the regular light colors, but let's talk about the other cool modes. So if we are craft computing, he likes the purple color. So we can go to the purples. And again, I feel kind of bad because my GoPros do a much better job of representing colors. You can see here. So there's one there there's the other one still looking there really really cool um, you can change it to a different color over here the the ui leaves a little bit to be desired and there is about a one second maybe a half second delay between picking something you can see so if i go right to purple it takes it a little bit of time but you notice it, it actually does that fading change it doesn't instantly change that's something that's also cool you can link the strips together as you see across the top i could hit plus and then I could add groups. I could do really cool things like that. So another awesome feature about these. Um, so the scene mode is kind of cool. So you could actually just do a color temperature scene. This is their energized scene, which look how clear that white is. A lot of times you look at these, the white is super blue and these ones are not that way. Um, the white actually looks natural like white. So that's that. We also have different theme modes, like this is movie mode, I guess, in their color scenes. It's changing the brightness and the color as well. Meditation mode apparently is that mode. But the one that we started out with, which is kind of psychedelic here, was their audio music following mode. <laughs> Anytime you make any noise, it will automatically pulse the lights. And you can have it in my case, I'm doing an auto color but you could actually set the order in which it changes colors. So for a kid's bedroom that likes music, how cool would that be to have this change? Now, before I give you guys like, you know, some sort of seizure, we can change to this mode, which doesn't go up and down, or we can go to the flicker mode. Now this one is just on off. <laughs> So that one is sound reactive. Also kind of a cool thing. And you know what I was thinking? I've had some other sound reactive ones. I'm going to go crazy if I don't set this back. Give me one second. We'll go back to that. Alexa, turn on the studio. We'll get the lights back going <laughs> so you guys can see. Awesome. And I'm going to go back to full. Alexa, set the head key to 20%. Okay, so you can see that this is all audio reactive and I'm running it from the app, right? But if I turn the app off, this is still audio reactive. Now, if I just tap the control box, you can see what's going on. The control box has got the microphone in it and that's what's doing the listening and that's what's doing the changing. So other ones that I've had that are cheaper, you have to have your phone out all the time 
in the app open to have it listen through the phone and then change it. This one, because it includes an intelligent controller with that, is able to do that. So let's take a look real quick at what they're, they're charging for these right now on Amazon. It's $27.99. Now, the Wise Pros are not yet available on Amazon. And actually, I'm going to set these to a single color or a pulsing pattern because <laughs> you guys will, will hate it if it doesn't do that. There we go. There we go. Okay, so let's let's do blue. That's my favorite. So, yes, these are the Wise Strip LED lights. And <laughs> the daylight setting sold me uh, constant. Constantino said, I'm going to get that right by the end of the show. Constantino says the daylight setting. Now what that is, it's a wise exclusive feature where they've set it up with your app and the time zone that it knows you're in and it will follow the sun. So these will get brighter and get dimmer over time. So it's really kind of slick. So if it's in the morning, you know, sun's coming out, these can turn on nice and gently. And then by the evening, they can turn back down. Um, I've seen these people or people use these everywhere. There's the app. There's a couple examples. They do have a video here. I don't know if the audio is going to come through. I'm not going to completely play here. I just want to show you a couple places that you can use it. A lot of places behind TVs. So that's really cool. And that one right there is actually what I wanted to show you, a kid's bedroom. That's uh, one of the other cool places. Are you able to cut these to the length needed, uh, Constantino says? And absolutely yes. So let me show you where that is. On every one of these uh, little segments here, in between the resistors that they have, there is this cut area and you can cut them. Now, other brands will include a splicing kit. So if maybe if you wanted to cut it 90 degrees around a corner, which is really common, um, this one does not include a splicing kit, but if you're handy with electronics or you have a soldering iron, like over here, you could absolutely solder these, do them, you know, stretch, extend, do whatever. Really, I think the limitation, and we'd have to check the manual, is how many of these you can stick together just because of the power supply and power draw. But they're definitely super bright. I didn't see a lumen factor on them, and I don't know how they would really measure all those. Let's see if they're in the product details here. Didn't see those right away. Let me pull that up. Yeah, so it doesn't show me the, the lumen capability here. Color changing, timer adjustable. But if we come down here now, you'll see there's a pretty good video if you want to watch it already. Wise is doing great. But this is the sun match here. So sync your lights with the natural day-night cycle. You've got that capability. You can use them around here with bars. This is the trimmable version like I just mentioned. And then you've got the different ones there. Now the white strip, the light strip pros are going to do advanced lighting effects. You can see there's multiple colors along the same strand. That's a new thing. So that's not yet available on these. Uh, this is the light strip. So this is the basic model. If you want the advanced capability to do chasing colors and other programmable things, the light strip pros, but they're not available on Amazon yet, or at least they weren't as of yesterday. So I did not include them in the show. I do have a set, so I may put a video together for that. Um, just looking to see any additional product details if it has a lumen count. I don't see, I see a wattage, which is good. So it's saying 24 watts, which is unfortunately bigger than the, uh, <laughs> the included amperage could be, you know, but we'll see. So I know that there are at least 18 watts on the box here. And so that is the Wise Light Strips that you're watching on the show. We're going to switch over here now, switch gears to our last product. And I promised you I would give you the details of the giveaway so let me get this last product loaded up and this is the maxwell robot vacuum now what's cool about this robot vacuum is it's it's more of an entry-level robot vacuum right <laughs> oh no i see our our special friend our special visitor <laughs> is here get out your mates there we go. Welcome, Cran, to the show. Uh, we got our Aussie connection lined up. We were just taking a look at the Wise strips here. This is the Wise light strip. I'm going to move those down and off to the side to bring up the the product of the day. This is the product from the show sponsor today, which is the Trifo Company. Now, just a quick reminder while I'm getting things cleaned up and ready here for this product. If you are a brand... I'm doing 52 shows this year of at least five products. I never realized how many products that was going to be. 
and I'm showing five products a week. I've got about 150 in the backlog right now, just so we have a buffer here. But if you're a brand and you want to show your product, get in contact with me. It's just jonathanetguy.com, and let's talk about it. We can show your product on a Tech on Tuesday. And if you want to do a giveaway, it's a great opportunity for your product to get visibility like this one. So this, I'm going to put this up here so you can kind of see it at an angle. This is the Trifo Maxwell. Now they make four or five different, I think it's four right now, different models of robot vacuum at Trifo. This one is the entry level. So this is the ground floor. It's normally 299, but I'll tell you, there's some cool things that I can do today on the show. Let me pull it up here on the carousel, make sure it's loaded. So the, a couple cool things that will happen today. They have a 10% off promo code that's what i wanted to make sure was live i think i have to hit a button give me one second to hit this button so that i can show you this promo code live looks like it's there it's it's live on the stream good okay so that promo code and i'm going to put it up on the screen here shortly will let you get 10 percent off the 299 price and another hundred dollars off that they have it's stackable so this is hundred and sixty nine dollars when you combine those two promotions here so when i say entry level this is about one of the more entry level vacs but it has features that you don't see in them such as this little window here now i don't know which camera is going to capture it best probably this one that's a camera so when i open this thing up and this is the one I've been using and testing at my house. It's actually got stuff in the bin there that we're going we're gonna to explore what it was able to pick up in two passes here. It's got some really cool features. It's got a USB charging port on the top. Not sure where I would use that, but it's kind of cool to have sometimes. You know, you can't find your charger. Uh, <laughs> it's got some things like that. Um, it does have all the traditional stuff. I'm going to go back out to the widescreen that you would expect in a traditional robot vacuum. It's got this front bumper. So as you're going along, if it runs into something on the edges or the side, it'll back up and turn. The wheels on the bottom and stuff, I'm going to show you this. I tend not to like to flip this thing upside down. We kind of learned our lesson is that it can drop stuff if you don't have the bin emptied. But it's got that brush roller. It's got these adjusting wheels. It can go up over a two centimeter object. And for you uh, metrically challenged, two centimeters is what, about three quarters of an inch almost? So that's what you're looking at there. Um, it also does have this six brush auger built in. And what this is for, and you'll see it in the videos, is it spins around and it goes into the corners. So even though this is a round shape, it can get into corners with this and it's always spinning the items to that pickup in the center. So that's how they've designed it. Really, really cool design there. Just so you know, this is the unit we're going to give away. Um, I'm going to show you all the details about it. I'm going to show you the unboxing. I'm going to put it all back together, and you're going to have a chance to win this. The drawing is going to be held on the next Tech on Tuesday. So I'll give you details on that very soon. <laughs> Great for jumping from low pile or smooth flare up onto carpets. Yes, this works on hard surfaces as well as carpets. Kren says four-fifths of an inch, but yeah, who's counting, right? <laughs> give me one second. Mm. so yeah again super cool product i'm going to go over here online and show you where you can find it on my amazon page just like i've been showing you all show if you go to my tech on tuesday page there are two vacuums and the reasons that i put two vacuums in here is this is another vacuum that's going to be coming up this is their lucy vacuum and this is the way way advanced one this has even got more features than the wise one has dual cameras it has all sorts of cool stuff but again for this one right here this is the maxwell you can see already the ratings on it are excellent here um, it, the price is actually going to adjust down you'll see that you're going to get the hundred dollar promotion and then you're going to get the 10 percent off additional discount with the code that i'm going to give you so it should come out to around 160 is what they were saying and that's good until february 28th so we're going to talk about that shortly so let me go ahead and get this loaded up for you guys. And I'm going to show you real quick some pictures of the unboxing, kind of what you can expect from this thing. We'll put it into slideshow mode, and I can show you real quick how this thing comes apart. So there is the box from the Maxwell. Uh, very well packaged. It's not incredibly large. It's pretty easy to, to open. I've seen some of these that get a little crazy. 
you know, really decent packaging. This is my front room, you know, my living room where I do most of my vacuum tests. And the packaging is A plus on this thing. Super easy. I guess my big test is, could I give this to my dad and could he set it up? It does come with these little spy glasses. There. <laughs> it's just a sticker. I guess you could put it on there if you want to have something fun on your vacuum cleaner <laughs> or somewhere. Uh, very well packaged. It comes in basically three parts. You've got the charging base, you've got the charging cord, and then you have the vacuum, but you really don't have to do any other assembly other than that. And that can be different than others where you have to assemble them essentially as you get them. This one's ready to go. And all the instructions are actually in that top circle disc. It's pretty cool. So you've got that. I'm pulling all those things out, taking a few shots that you're going to see in my upcoming <laughs> review video. So I'll scroll through these pretty quick. This one I want to stop on for a second. Um, what you're seeing right here are these metallic contacts. Now this is an IR emitter base and it will back up and it will put itself on top of those contacts. So that's the best way to do it there. Um, getting a question. Will it handle liquid? Uh, let's not put too much liquid in it. It'll probably do as much as a broom would. Uh, you know, you're not going to be <laughs> evacuating liquid from a flood or something. Uh, it, it'll handle small liquid messes and it'll go right through them, but it's not designed for wet spill cleanup or anything. It does have, and you'll see here in a future picture when I open it up, it's going to have a, a kind of a squeegee base on it, which is pretty cool. And the Lucy coming up has a mop. So if you're looking at picking up some sort of wet items, you could probably turn the suction down and do that. The one thing you are going to have to do on this is you pull off this packing cover for the bumper and it fits right behind the bumper and that releases the bumper to work in and out. Um, there is the bin. This is an oversized bin when you compare it to the Wise or other ones. Definitely has an oversized bin. Now what's interesting on this one is it's kind of backwards from the other ones that I've used. Uh, whereas the other ones, you know, they're the HEPA filter is on the back and then the front opens. This one, it opens from the HEPA filter side. So, you know, from a noise perspective, this is going to have the smallest motor of the four that they have. The other ones are all 3000. There's that HEPA filter I was talking about. Um, so this has the smallest motor, but it's really not that bad from a noise perspective. On hard surfaces, we, we tend to turn them down anyway. There's all the, the parts. Super easy to work on, by the way. Oh, of course, I just skipped this out where we want to be. What I was going to say is it's really, really easy to work on this thing. Uh, if you need to do, take it out and do any sort of cleaning or maintenance, you flip it over on its back. There's just two buttons here, and I'm going to sw swing us back to where we were. There's just two buttons there that pull off the retainer, and then that brush arm comes out. Now, those are all replaceable, and they have a counter in the app that's going to tell you how long you have to wait there. This, uh, for Novella, for your question, was about the liquid. This is the little kind of the squeegee line that it has. It does not have a mop, but the body is very similar. Like, it even has some of the mopping ducts and capabilities. Even though it doesn't have a mop, it has some of those capabilities. I think they use the same mold as some of the other ones. There's that little caster front wheel that it uses, and it's cool. It's If you ever watch BattleBots, it's basically your own cleaning BattleBot running around there. And I'm going to go through a couple pictures. These are all the instruction manuals for it. I'm going to take a quick look at the Amazon chat. I don't want to ignore you guys. Give me one second. Just want to make sure that I am answering all your questions on Amazon Live. If you are just tuning in, this is John the Net Guy. We are taking a look at the Trifo vacuum. This is the Maxwell. And the big selling point on this one is not only is it a super great budget vacuum it has got a security camera built in which i'll show so that's pretty cool and we're going to go through here there's the rest of those and there's the bottom picture of it that's the base now this is something i wanted to tell you guys how to do if you've never seen one of these before is they take the excess cord and you wrap it around these two posts in the base these things are notorious for being cord eaters. <laughs> and so these ones, you definitely want to put some sort of base around it here. Uh, so wrap it around that, those two base poles, and then you're good to go. So I think that, let's see if I've got the view that I want. Awesome. So we're going to come back to that here shortly. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some of the video so you can see how this thing runs. And we're going to run through that. I'm going to pop that up and then we will get going. So there we go. 
So this is the first initial startup of the vacuum. So I had it set up here against the wall in my front room, and I'm just going to click it here. You can see how it operates. It heads off there, getting ready to go off and do some cleaning. This is on board the robot vacuum in my house. <laughs> you can see the ride along here. I didn't show you the actual picture from it, and I will show you that here shortly uh, so you can see what that security camera looks like. This thing has already got my kids going crazy. They uh, love chasing it, and I've got three of these opened in the house right now. Uh, we do normally pick up our chairs. I wanted to point that out there. You see all these chairs upside down. I try to give it the benefit of the doubt. The Lucy is the only one because of its super advanced navigation that I was able to leave all my chairs down and it made its way in and out of those chairs. It's got an incredible camera system, incredible navigation system. This one does have intelligent navigation, so it's going to use an IR emitter camera in the front, and it's going to look for different things that it can avoid. You'll see in some of the tests, it's kind of funny, actually, <laughs> the results of it. So that was the ride-along. In general, smooth, quiet operation. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know, because... Again, my noise canceling is set up to like drown out any sort of vacuum or droning sounds. So I'm trying to demo a vacuum for you guys here. And one of the other cool things that I've noticed is toe kicks are super hard for most robot vacuums. So this robot vacuum actually makes it underneath that toe kick and then turns around, as you can see. So it's actually able to get all the way under those, which was really awesome. That was something that you don't normally see. And I'm going to show you later in a picture. The Wise one has that LiDAR sensor, so it has laser and when it turns around, it gets enough to get under the toe kick. When it turns around, it scratches all my cabinets. So this one, a lot more simple. Now, again, it's going to have some challenges coming up here. Navigation to it, like I said, not as uh, intelligent as some of the other ones. Like the Lucy does a lot better job mapping immediately and then doing um, the, the cleaning pass. This one kind of stumbles as it goes. I'll show you real quick here. This is along my stairwell. And, you know, it kind of had to bump around and hit that and bump onto that and then keep trying and trying. And then it's, you know, not going to get fully into that corner. So, again, a little bit less navigational smarts, I would say, on this thing. But the good news is this is my stairwell to the downstairs. And this is actually our other vacuum that it's replacing, the Sensor XP there. And it does not <laughs> jump off the edge of the stairwell. That would be the end to a battle bot or a robot vacuum if it did that. You can see, so it's using that sweeper to get towards the edges of things, get around there. Uh, it's, it's wiping down the other vacuums that are still in their box here that we're checking out. And it's going to go right to that bullnose edge that I have installed, and you can see it cleaning along the wall there. And then it's going to stop, and then it's going to turn, and it's going to move, and it can try it again, and then it's going to stop. So that's really cool. So it does have that fall detection. It's not going to go ahead and uh, jump off of there. <laughs> so that was exciting on that one this is the first of a couple tests i wanted to talk to you guys about and that is kids toys so when we get some of the future ones this is one of the hardest things for a robot vacuum to clean around which is a simple magnet toy that my kid loves to use and so this is going to be in all of my tests and this thing's got some miles on the odometer it's been scraped around quite a bit on the floors so this is the first test is, I'm going to call it the, the Toy Thief. And this thing, unfortunately, and fortunately, you can see it there coming up to it. This is the amazing part here. Now, normally, most robot vacuums that I've had are too tall, right? So they're too tall that they won't go under this very short table leg and you know metal piece that's in the middle. This one absolutely made it under there. The problem was it swallowed the toy completely. It didn't put it in the intake, which I've had other ones do. It just held it and then it started dragging it around my floor. So that was not going to be a good sign for a future tests that I'll show you about. Uh, but the next one here was when I came to rescue the toy. Now I got a question in the Amazon chat. What's the mapping like? No go zones. And does it support multi floor? That's a great question. It does support multi floors because the mapping is not essentially retained. It's mapping every time, it looks like, when I'm using it. Again, don't quote me on that. We'll have to look at the specs. But when I've been using it, it's been remapping every time, whereas the Ys and some other ones will retain the mapping. This one is a very budget-friendly vacuum. Again, you don't get to this price point uh, without that. And so this one is going to do that. Now, I came in here, and, and the reason I mentioned that is I came in here to rescue the toy. I had to hit the stop button. 
and I wanted to make sure that the toy was going to be safe, so I put the vacuum on its side, and I tried to film and put the vacuum up and rescue the toy. The vacuum starts to roll away, uh, but I, re I rescued and recovered. Now, I set it down a little bit hard there, and when it started to resume, it actually lost its place. It lost its bearings to where it was cleaning, and it actually started over. So, Constantino, to answer your question, it actually started over like it was a new floor there. And so that was the, the sign there. The next thing I'm going to show you, and, and my wife, she wonders sometimes of the stuff that I order on Amazon. And I saved you guys. I didn't put this in the cart. We don't have a dog here anymore. Uh, our friends have adopted our dog. This is what I'm going to call the mega doo-doo test. So this is the hardest thing for uh, vacuum cleaner owners, especially robotic ones, where they will run over and drag this kind of thing. No, this is not real. It's squishy. It's kind of like a stress ball, actually. Uh, it'll run this over, and it'll drag it all around your house. By the time you notice it, it's too late. So this is the mega doo-doo test. And we're going to see what this thing did on the mega doo-doo test coming up next. So I set it just anywhere in the, the floor, and I'm going to put this out there for future vacuums. I have high hopes for the Lucy with its super intelligent navigation. Now, this thing's doing a great job cleaning the floor. You can see it sucking some stuff up there on the way over here. But when it hits this, it rolls over it. It doesn't even stop the bumper. I had to set the camera back up. And it turns tail and runs. So if this was real, um, this is kind of a fail. But again, if you don't have animals or you don't have incontinent animals, I should say, this is still a really cool robot vacuum. So the Mega Doo Doo test... It's a big fail on that one, unfortunately, but uh, not a reason not to purchase this. Now, a couple cool things about it. It made it into this super tight area, but unfortunately, it made it into the super tight area so tight that it went back and forth for a couple minutes. I didn't want to interrupt it, but I finally did have to intervene here, pull this thing out, and rescue it from its precarious situation. <laughs> uh, so if you have a you know furniture layout that maybe has some furniture that's um, you know, close to a wall and you can move it over just a little bit to block it. That's one way you can do it. Or you can move it away from the wall slightly and this thing would have done a great job. This just happened to be the perfect size to trap a robot vacuum. <laughs> oh no, Constantino says, that's awesome you thought of that. I've been there a couple times with my dog. It's not fun and a mess. Uh, I got a question on the chat from Novella Hub. He says, is there a certain amount of maintenance needed for a robot vacuum? There is. So like on a regular vacuum, you're trading out bags, you're trading out filters, things like that. There's a little bit of maintenance. I'm going to show you that here in a second. We're going to dump the, the bin, uh, which you can do. Some of the newer vacuums will actually suck the bin out, all the, the refuse in the bin and do that cleaning automatically. This one doesn't have that capability, but we'll talk about maintenance here in a sec. Thanks for asking on that one. Uh, as far as how it made it back to base, return to base here, it actually did a really good job. So it backed itself out, and then it backed all the way up. And you can see it kind of shimmying there. It's following an IR emitter. So there's an invisible line here that it's following, and it's backing itself up, and it starts yeah. to charge. Other cool things about this, and why I say even my parents could set it up, setup on this was a breeze. You literally take everything out, you plug it into the wall, you set this down, you turn it on, and the app takes it completely from there. So that's a really exciting thing. I did want to show you this. This is the comparison of the different models that they have. This is the Maxwell, the Emma. The Max, I haven't found. I think that one's being discontinued. And then there's the Lucy. So the, essentially, there's three models that I'm going to be able to show you guys, which is the Max, the Emma, and the Lucy. I don't know the exact dates on the next two. But hey, this is a great time to say... If you follow me, John the Net Guy on Amazon, you're going to get notified every single time I go live. And when there's that drawing for this robot vacuum next week, there's details are going to be coming right now. Um, then you're going to be able to be notified and you'll be able to see if you won that drawing next week. So let's get back to that drawing we were talking about. First thing first, if you want to use the promo code to pick this thing up. Now, I just noticed that the price... It's funny, the price in the cart may have adjusted on me on this one. So the price went up. They did have a $100 off discount, and I can check with my contact on there. The promo code that you can use up until February 28th is OMPT3BTC. So that's the promo code there in red with no quotes. And that's the one that you can use on Amazon. You put that in at the end in the checkout. 
Um, that's going to give you 10% off the list price of the vacuum. They had another promo, which is stackable. It should be working. Something might have reset on there as well. And hey, thank you, Amazon customer, for your follow. And you know what, Constantino, he's asking me on Amazon, he says, hey, does it have a dirt bin sensor full and stop when full? You know, I haven't honestly picked up enough for it to do that, so I can't answer that. Uh, but I will take a look into that, and on the next show, I'll let you know the answer to that question. So we have come to that time where we're going to show the robot vacuum giveaway details here. I'm going to go ahead and show some other stuff about the vacuum. But here is the really, really super simple way to enter this. One, follow the net guy on Amazon. So if you can go onto my Amazon shop, hit the live stream link, watch that live stream and just hit the follow. That's all you have to do. There's no purchase necessary for this. Email vacuum at the net guy. And don't worry about misspelling it. You can put a couple extra U's, a couple C's. They all go to me. Um, put that in the email to vacuum at the net guy. And the subject line, use Maxwell, just so I know that you're not trying to win some other vacuum that we may run in the future. Uh, the drawing is going to be held on March 1st, 2022. So if you're watching this after March 1st, 2022, I'm really sorry. The, draw the giveaway is over, but <laughs> catch me on another Tech on Tuesday because I'll probably have more of these. This has been a really cool product. I do have one interesting thing here, which is I have not actually emptied this robot vacuum. I'll bring those instructions up here. Uh, for you guys shortly so this has gone a couple passes through the entire first floor of my house and i asked my wife i said are people gonna want to actually see what it picked up <laughs> now let me know in the chat what you guys think are you guys gonna really want to see all the stuff that was on my floor <laughs> i'm gonna get this ready just in case the answer is what i think it's gonna be with this crowd uh i got four kids here this week <laughs> <laughs> and two adults let's see how the framing on that looks okay let's see if i can bring up myself as well here let me show you how easy this thing is to dump it's not bad at all coming over here <laughs> and you asked novella hub says hey is there a certain amount of vacuum maintenance needed for robot vacuum and i'm going to answer that right now yes you have to empty it one you also can clean some of the brushes here. Super duper easy to open, like I just showed you there. And I'm going to show you the app here in just one second. Um, but there is the security camera that we talked about. There's the Wi-Fi light and all the other stuff and how to set it up. This is the interesting thing. So to take this and open it up, you just push down and lift up. Now, in this case, I had it tilted. But what you'll see there is this, this orifice or opening. That is for dirt and other items to come down in here. Now, you're already seeing some of that come out. Um, how does it deal with long hair? It wraps it up just like every other vacuum. No, you'll, I'll show you that on the bottom. I actually did have to pick that off. Um, so hair will get caught on this. There is a more pet-friendly version coming up next week and the weeks after. I'm going to show you some other more pet-friendly ones um, that have that sensor so that they don't run over anything. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to tilt this over here. And I'm going to show you how to open it. So you push this green button down. That's the removable HEPA filter. Now, look away if you're squeamish, but that's what it picked up off of my carpet. Now, I said we don't have pets, so I really don't know where a lot of this kind of lint and dander... Uh, my kids, did I mention, they love Top Ramen. So sure enough, I expected there to be... There's a French fry in here too, apparently, too. Uh, <laughs> that is what you'd have to do to empty it out. So that is the Maxwell. That is emptying it out. Uh, you can clean. Obviously, you can remove the HEPA filter here. I'm going to see if I can do that on this one properly. I don't want to force it, but there is a way to remove the HEPA filter. There we go. So pushing that side in. It's got just a little retainer clip right there. And then this is that foam pad. You can see, for some reason, my other vacuums have not been picking up this really fine debris. And I'm wondering, you know, if that's a new thing. And my wife, she loves to clean. So I'm wondering if there's something going on there with my other vacuum that it's not pulling this up. So uh, one word of advice here, don't flip these vacuums over if you can help it. In most cases, that's not going to lead to a good outcome, uh, especially if the dustbin is full. So my wife had earlier 
was cleaning and moved the vacuum and said it wouldn't stop running so i just set it upside down like a bug <laughs> the counter so let me show you down here on the the inside of this how this works so that's the su suction path there the back side and then on this this side that's where the roller is and that's the place where it sends that through um, let me go through the bottom side here again super easy to maintain just two clips right there that comes off that's your roller cover and then this is your roller. So you asked about hair earlier. And yes, I have girls with long hair. <laughs> and so now I'm pulling some of that off. So in a couple rounds, I got some hair. Other vacuums I've seen will include like a, a cutter you can use. Um, you could use a knife on this. Again, this is only a couple passes. So this thing's essentially brand new. And it will be brand new when it's all cleaned up and ready and sent over to you. Because if you want it, we're still running that giveaway. Novella Hub says dinner's ready. <laughs> oh no, I just got that. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. So that is emptying out the tray here, and that's how you take this thing apart. I'm going to put it back together and we're going to fire it up. Now, it automatically wanted to start driving around off my table, so I'm really, really hoping that this thing doesn't take off. <laughs> And try to damage itself but i'm going to turn it on and i want you to be able to see the camera that it has there's a couple extras that came through the agitator so putting it back together super duper easy again just like that and don't operate it with the lid open if you can help it setting this up the one thing that i would say if you're impatient like me and you don't follow directions <laughs> when you're setting this up make sure that you hold the uh home or power whichever one it is for five seconds to do the setup because i didn't do that and it was it was infuriating to me because i thought oh i'll just turn it on and then it's going to ask for wi-fi um that was not the case i'm going to put it down here just to see if i can show you guys a couple of these other cool modes that it has i haven't planned or tried this but we're about to find out <laughs> so i'm going to move some of these other products out of the way i don't want it to run that over so if you're just joining, this is John the Net Guy. We're taking a look at the first security-enabled robot vacuum. I'm giving this one away. I'm going to show you the, the special details on how you can win this one shortly. But I'm going to fire this thing up, and I'm going to see if we can do some of the fun stuff with it here. There we go. You probably won't get to hear it talk, but this thing talks all the time, and you can set the different modes on that. Let's see if I can trick it with the charger. It's not quite a Windows boot up sound, but it has some music. Now Bella Hub says dinner's ready. There we go. Oh, nom. Awesome. Okay. How does it deal with long hair? We answered that one. Can you show the discount code again, please? Yeah, I'm going to get that loaded up for you guys. Thank you for asking. I'll get that loaded up. I'm going to show that real quick here for Dave Frank who's asking in the chat. That's the discount code. Again, not great if you have pets possibly that this thing might do. Uh, works pretty well. I did get it caught under my couch because it is so low profile. It was actually able to fit all the way underneath my couch. No other robot vacuum has been able to do that, so I'm still working that out. Um, it does have that intelligent navigation and the security camera, which I'm just about to show you here. If you do lift it up and down a few times like I have there, it, it's going to change modes. It's going to tell you that the wheels are stuck or whatever the, the case may be. I'm going to pull up the Trifo app, and we're going to see... I actually have two robot vacuums on my app here. I've got the Maxwell, which says it's online. Thank goodness. And then I've got the other ones. Now, I want to try to figure out how to, uh, I can frame this so you guys can see it driving around. But I'm going to show you how this thing actually does work uh, through the app. So we can open the Maxwell. Now, I don't have the mapping here, but I'm going to show you a couple things that I've recorded recently. Motion detection record. Here we go. Hopefully this is not when uh, my wife caught it and flipped it upside down. Oh, is that going to come up? I don't know if it's going to let me play that one back. 
there we go. So this was me just walking around. Again, you can set the motion detection on this and it'll actually be a playable video here. I'm trying to see if it's not going to let me do that through this. It should work through the dongle here. These are definitely cloud hosted though. For, so I don't know if this thing has local memory or not. So there's the video of me walking around talking. You know, that was the nine o'clock there yesterday. It looks like it was able to capture that. Um, and so that's the motion detection recording. Let's go back out. It's not going to have mapping yet because again, I haven't run it to, you know, map anything. So you can see right here, it's just sitting out. Now, if it finds, let's see if it can find this. If it does find, and I plug in the base station, it should be able to find where its base is just through the IR emitters here. So I've just moved the base station. So you guys will know here. I'm going to take that out of your way so you don't have to see that. I'm going to go ahead and do the start video. And that's going to start the video camera on it. And you're going to be able to see in my studio, I'm trying to move it around here. This is a live picture from the unit. Now, I don't know if it's connected to my upstairs Wi-Fi, but there it's moving. It's a little bit delayed. This one does not have a microphone. So, but the picture quality it's pretty decent. You're seeing all the lighting and stuff, my overhead camera rig, all that. It's at a pretty steep upward angle. So you can see where I'm standing. It's looking upward. The Lucy has a much more like forward facing camera here. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera off. Let's see, or can I do that? I can do a full screen view. Unfortunately with the app, it doesn't actually rotate the view. So I'm going to turn, turn the video off and then I'm going to get into Okay, please don't drive off the cliff. This could be interesting. So I am using the manual controls to back this thing up. <laughs> I'm going to get it out of your way and go to full just so you guys can see. that I am actually driving this thing and I'm trying to back it up onto its charger. So I'm backing it in. I got it. Did I get it? Is it going to, is it going to turn off or do I have to turn manual mode off? Let's see if it'll say charging here. That's usually the next step. If I've done everything right, <laughs> Let's see if I get the sense. There you go. Got them aligned. So now it's charging and this thing will run 120 minutes on a single charge. That's one of the cool things about it. So it's in the charging mode right now. Now I could do manual again. I think if I go forward a little bit, uh, don't go off the edge. <laughs> um, I can go backward a little bit, new forward. <laughs> forward a little bit <laughs> um i can hit the home button hopefully we turn off manual let's let's see if it'll do it this is all on its own i'm not driving thank goodness and it backed up right to the the charging station so again this is john the net guy we've been taking a look at the trifo maxwell this is the Maxwell security enabled smart vacuum. This is the first one I've ever seen like that. It really is a budget friendly entry level vacuum. If you do turn on the motion detection, now let me show you what that looks like. So if you go in here to the menu, I'm just going to go quickly through the settings so you can see all about it. You can go to voice settings, you can change the language or you can turn on quiet mode. Now, if you do quiet mode, it's not going to be doing all the announcements that it has. It also has a do not disturb mode, so you can use that. It has resume cleaning, so it will, if it's out of charge or it needs to go back, it'll go charge itself up and then go back to clean and then, then uh, return. It's got a cleaning schedule, which I didn't set on this one, but you can go ahead and hit plus and you can set a schedule and a repeat and then you can set the cleaning mode of what you want. I've got a cleaning history here. It's got a few three foot areas and a couple areas, but you can see it did 763 square feet in 54 minutes. So that's pretty good. That's even without the fancy navigation, that's really in line with some of the other devices we've seen from a maintenance perspective. This one was a question from Novella. The maintenance on this one is pretty simple. It's going to keep these counters going. Your side brush is removable, your filter, and your main brush. It's saying about 150 hours on each one of those, which is pretty reasonable. And they're all user serviceable. Uh, motion detection, if I turn it on, and then I go back out here, what you're going to find out is if I move in front of it, let's see. <laughs> see if I can get an alert pop up on my phone. I don't know if it has to see somebody. <laughs> Or not. There we go. We got motion detection and it's actually, it alerted both of my phones because they both have the app. I'm going to hit the, the notification there. Let's see. 
There we go. So this is the motion detection video that it captured. We're playing it back. You don't have a lot of fancy controls on this one. There's not a bunch of things, so it's got me waving. That was the, the video that it caught right away, and I'm sure the other one will show up here shortly. <laughs> so that's what it does with the motion detection. And I'm going to go ahead and turn that off so I don't get spammed the rest of the show. And there's the next couple motion detection alerts came through. <laughs> Uh, function review, that's going to have it remind you every time you go back into those windows. Don't need to worry about that. And it does have a find my robot. Now, like I said, this morning I went down to see how it had done and it had disappeared. It, it was completely gone. And so I was like, what happened? You know, where did this robot go? And sure enough, it had made itself underneath my couch. Now my couch is really, really low but it is low enough to get under there and it got underneath my couch and I didn't know where it was, but let me show what you can do. You can hit find my robot. There you go. So you hit find my robot, kind of like find your phone. It's going to say that sentence anywhere in the room. You should be able to find it. I didn't think to do that. And I had started looking around. It had about 12% battery left. And so, you know, it was, it was able uh, to communicate if I needed to, but it, I didn't use that feature. I didn't think to. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys one more time. This is the last time I'm going to show the giveaway details for this vacuum. Again, this is the Trifo Maxwell. And thank you to the Trifo company for sponsoring this show and sponsoring this vacuum giveaway. So we're going to be sending you this vacuum as soon as possible. And the way that you enter that is you just send an email to me. Vacuum at the net guy. Don't worry about your spelling. It all comes to me in the end. And go ahead and follow me on Amazon. That would be greatly appreciated. Put a subject line in there of Maxwell so I know that you want to be entered into this. And we're going to do the drawing live next Tech on Tuesday. So when you guys tune into that, it'll be earlier enough in the show that you're not going to have to wait. Trust me. Um, but you guys can see if you've won that. And all the other regular contest rules apply. Um, you know, obviously YouTube and Amazon are not sponsors of this contest. There's the contest uh, administrator and contact information to be legal. Now I'm going to check the Amazon chat just one last time to see if there are any questions. Um, discount code we did show, it has a drop sensor. Yeah, so the stairwell, when it came across. Now, I don't know if you're in manual mode if it will <laughs> hit the drop sensor there. But uh, yeah, definitely scared me, you know, driving it in manual. Uh, which is another thing that even some of the more expensive vacuums don't have the ability to do manual driving around. The novelty will probably wear off, but it was really kind of fun to put the GoPro on it and drive around and, and capture some footage. So that's kind of fun here. Can this be operated without using the app or Wi-Fi? I'm thinking about the parents on this. Now, Constantino, that's a really good question. I bet you if you set it up the initial time that this would be able to clean somehow. Um, you could also probably hotspot to your phone somehow. You might be able to do something like that. I would have to come back to you next week on that. So if you're here tuned in next week, let me find the answer on that. And the reason I say that is because of the way that it, it operates. Um, you know, a lot of the app features are for enhancements, but you know, it does have the home button and a lot of them, if you just hit power, it'll do start cleaning and it'll take off and clean. If that's the case, it might be able to, to work without the app. But that's a, a fantastic question. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. This has been John, the net guy. This is Tech on Tuesday. Uh, just to foreshadow you a little bit of what we got going on next week. <laughs> I'm going to pull up next week's list here of products. And I'm here every week on Tuesday. <laughs> Let me get these up for you here. See if I have next week's products lined up. Um, then we will be able to show you two different monitors. Yeah, next week is actually going to be a monitor showcase. There's a long-term test. When I say long-term, I mean like three months. So around Black Friday, I showed you guys a really cool Scepter monitor got a long-term test. I've been editing footage with it. I've been using it and uh, Scepter finally wants it back, I think. And <laughs> they only want it back because they want to send me more monitors uh, to test because they've been really, really good about that. But I wanted to, to talk to you guys about that one and show you all the cool things about it. It is my favorite pick uh, for a monitor right now for a gaming 27 inch. I also have a budget 27 inch. I got it for almost nothing and I want to show you that one and we'll do all my cool science fancy monitor tests on those as well. And I'm also taking a look at 
uh, the Real Link camera, and we're going to also look at a doorbell. So we're going to do that next week. And Miss Granham, you are now entered into the <laughs> uh, giveaway. I just saw that your name pop up there. So congratulations on your entry there. And so again, this has been John the Net Guy. I want to thank the Trifo brand company for sending out this and two other robot vacuums that you're going to be seeing in future weeks. This one is going to go to a lucky winner next week. And also just wanted to remind you of some of the other cool products I showed today. This was the 4K Nexigo camera. Now, do you guys remember how that looked? That's the 4K Nexigo. It's such a solid look that I was able to use it at the start of the show as a main camera, uh, which is unheard of. Now, my DSLR is slightly better, but it's 10 times the cost. So that's one of my highly recommended products right now. We also took a look at the Wise strip lights, and these ones are probably going to get sent to a friend that needs these badly in his studio. <laughs> so uh, look to see at those in another studio. And if Wise starts to sell the strip lights Pro, I will show those to you guys. Uh, uh, sorry, if they sell them on Amazon, I will show those to you guys as well. So again, these are the Wise LED lights that I showed. Um, and then we also have for the budget conscious that need a good 4K close-up webcam. Now this is, again, a personal webcam. I'm just going to bring up the Cam Engine software here so you guys can see that. And actually, now that I've got that running, I don't need that. Give me one second. Okay. So if you want a personal budget webcam, this is the Avermedia. This is the 513. So this is a 4K webcam. You can see the picture right here. We've got it tuned up pretty well. You could do a little bit more. Um, does have that integrated privacy shutter like I talked to you about. So you can pull this down. If you're worried about your privacy and you want a physical privacy shutter, you can use that. The Nexigo, in its defense, does have one, but it feels kind of like an add-on. It's kind of a, a flap plastic that you put on there. Hey, Francisco Franco, I have to say thank you for your videos because of your videos. I built an Optiplex and can't be happier. Francisco, that's awesome. I'm so glad that that helped out. And Kim Lowe, I just want to say thank you for saying nice job. I'm happy to uh, give you all the information that I know on these products. And again, if you want to follow me, you can visit Amazon.com. And my store link is in the lower left corner there. It's just Amazon.com slash shop slash the net guy. Couldn't be easier. And with that, I don't see any more questions. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in a future video.